can we take an F-35 to Inuvik, to Iqaluit? Can it operate in the winters of Bagotville and Cold Lake? Can it operate for the rest of our fleet in Fairbanks, Alaska, in uh, northern Norway? We took it to a climatic chamber, a big huge hangar at Eglin Air Force Base near Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and we rang it through the extremes of 55 degrees Celsius, that's Death Valley, California hot, all the way down to minus 40 and made it take off, uh, operate, start up every day like you would in Coal Lake, take off an afterburner, in my case hover and do vertical takeoffs and short takeoffs to make sure the the Stovo variant could handle the difficulty of those extreme temperatures. And it did fascinatingly well, especially when you consider the sophistication of my helmet, of the touch screens in the cockpit, and every part of where the, the pilot would operate. You would think that would be difficult, as it was in my day in the CF-18. In the Canadian fleets that we look at, there's no valid comparison that talks about single engine or two engine fleets. So there's no need for two engines anymore with the engine reliability we have. If we look at the example of the United States Air Force F-16 fleet in Fairbanks, Alaska at Isleson Air Force Base, they have operated for decades with a single engine F-16 with never having had an engine failure. And I think that's a fairly worthy comparison when we're talking about single engine reliability. And those are with later generation, fourth generation engines.